Welcome to Not in the Set with me, National Core. In the last episode, uh, we talked about building versus buying a house. And uh, uh, I talked at length about the options of whether you should build or should buy. Um, I want to delve into now buying a house. And uh, I want to talk about what is required of you when you are to buy a house. What are those things that you have to, to check? So uh, we will do three episodes on this, on, uh, on, on, on the area of buying a house and what's, what's required of you to buy a house. Um, I, I wrote a book about this on offland buying called uh, Don't Buy That House. Don't Buy That House, you can get it on Amazon. It's on um, uh, our bookstores, Nuria and Rafu uh, bookstores. Uh, it's an insightful guide to off-plan house purchase. You can get the book. Uh, a lot of what I'm going to talk about in briefs are going to be from this book. So there are seven critical areas that I talk about in this book that any buyer, any buyer must tick before you buy a house. So I'm going to talk about those uh, seven areas, not as in-depth as in the book, but I'll give you snippets on them. You can get the book to read more of, of those seven areas. Uh, but they are what I called must, must do, seven must do to buy a house. Now, before I start about what you need to do when you're buying a house and those seven critical areas that you must take before buying a house, let me, let me say that off-plan model of buying a house is still here with us. I, I, I don't think there is any country that has done away with it. Um, if you look at the countries that are ahead of us, um, developed countries, um, upland, upland housing model is one of the easiest models for a developing country like Kenya to achieve its, its housing gap. So, I mean, it's challenges and, and uh, listen, it has it those challenges uh, which cannot be spoke to us. These challenges have been faced by the countries ahead of us. Uh, the only thing we need to do is to ring fence it. Uh, strengthen it with regu some regulations. Uh, hopefully, we'll be discussing some of those regulations and then make it uh, feasible for, for people because there is no easier way for first-time homeowners and, and for a country that is only 16% of us own houses. Uh, Off-plan model is still the best model for us to own homes. So we won't, won't do away with it. I mean, it's challenges. We must make it work. Uh, and, and, and why is it a preferred model. And let me just give you one or two advantages of plan model and why we risk losing as a people if we do away with our plan. And that's why I've, I've been against the idea of demonizing it totally. Because if we do so, we a lot of our population will not own houses. Let me just give you one or two advantages. It is cheaper. Our plan house is cheaper. Uh, you're buying a house now. Uh, they've just started construction. It's been completed in two years' time. You will get it cheaper than in two, in two years' time. Right, so Oplan is cheaper. Uh, another advantage of Oplan is um, you you get to pay it in bits. I like a complete house where this house is ten million. It's complete. I don't think you have any room to wiggle around. The developer wants fifteen million. He wants fifteen million. He wants ten million. Ten million. So you walk in, walk out. Oplan model will give you as a buyer the option of you start at the payments. Yeah. Well, based on milestones or monthly, whatever it is, you just just go through it. Yeah. So if it's a two year a two year project, and they require you to pay 10 percent uh, on a ten million house, it's one million. I pay nine million through two years. That's a good advantage of plan. Uh, another advantage of our plan is it it allows you to to make changes, I like a complete house. So if you, if you didn't want. Uh, a closed kitchen you can say look i want mine to be open plan or if you need one open open plan kitchen that are providing you could close it you can make some finishes changes around the house and and as, as the project comes up so that's another advantage of off plan and, and for those guys that are in the real estate investment for flipping off plans allow you to flip a house easily you i mean you buy it at when you're starting at 10 million one year, one year, half, uh, one year, one and a half down the line, it is 13 million you can resell. So it's a good model. So I think I wanted to qualify that first, that we must protect our plan. We, the, the voyage we are taking of demonizing our plan totally is not a good thing for a country that is has housing deficits. This is a model that's going to work for us and we must protect it. Now, 
the seven steps I want to talk about, and I will talk about two of them in this episode, then I'll talk about the rest in the two subsequent episodes uh, of what you must, as a, as a buyer, these are things that you must check before you buy a house or plan. If you're going to ensure that you're not conned, if you're going to ensure that no one gets your money for free, please do this. The first one I want to talk about is uh, the history of the developer. That's one of the critical things that as a buyer, as a home buyer, you must talk about. So I'm going to talk about the history of developer in this episode, and then I'm talking about the project team. Those two. All right? Now, let's go to the history of developer. And listen, I have met so many buyers that have been conned in this industry. I have met so many painful tears rolled down in my office when people have lost seven million from developers that actually were crooks. I mean, these are not, they sound like uh, episodes in a, in, a, in, a, in a movie, but they are true. People have lost money. And if you, if you check some of the companies that have conned people in this industry, there are companies that if you, if you just Googled, for example, you will not fail to get some question marks around those companies. There are companies, for example, if you came to me and said, Nashon, I want to buy a house and I lose a developer, I say it's ABCD. I'll tell you, run, flee, don't attempt. But the buyers did not check the history of developer. So there is no hurry. I always say, and, 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 and uh, developers will always make it feel like the houses are finishing. This country is nearly 600,000 square kilometers. Yeah, we are far from filling it up. Yeah, take your time and let's go through this process. So the history of developer is important. Who, who is this that you want to give your money? Who is this? Who is this company? What is the name of this company? Who are the directors of this company? All right. So, so you want to look at things like when was this company established? Is it registered? Is there a CR, uh, certificate of registration of incorporation of this company? Can you get it? Let's start from those basics. In, in looking at the history of the developer. Right? Is this company registered? I know it sounds so obvious, but please just get the certificate of registration. Tick that box. All right? Number two, this developer, does he belong to an association? I mean, you are interrogating the history of this developer. Does he belong to an association? There is a Kenya Property Developers Association, okay. KPDA. Is this developer a member of KPDA? You want to buffer yourself. You want to bulletproof your investment. You want to give this developer 10 million. You must ring fence your decision. So check whether is he a member of KPDA? Is he a member of a professional body? Right? Who are the directors of this company? Are they people of questionable character? All right. Can you Google them? Find out. Yeah. Find out who are the directors. In, in, some, in some of them, you'll always find in the in the in the the questionable ones, you'll always find that the directors keep changing a lot of times. Those are the red flags that you must you must look. Today, two directors, another one leaves, another one comes back. I mean, I know of companies in this, in this industry that are on their fifth name. They're on their fifth name, and that's why that history is important for you. Is this a novice company? Is this their first project? Have they done projects before? And those are the critical questions that you must ask before you give someone your 10 million. All right? If you find that a company is... It's on its third name. I mean, you, you, you must ask yourself, what is it that is making them change their names? And a number of companies in this industry that are on this uh, path of conning people into real estate, trust me, they are always changing their names. So you must interrogate, have they changed their name before? Is this their first project? And I'm not saying if it's the first project, it's wrong. There's nothing wrong with being a startup. But you need to know that, hey, this company A, this developer, this is their first 
project ever they're starting to do. So you're dealing with someone that's a novice. It's fine. It's nothing wrong with being a novice. But you know, or this is their second project. Right? Now, another thing you have to check under the history of developer is past projects. If this developer is not a novice, if they are, this is not their first project, then you have to know what other projects have they done in this industry? What other projects have they done? And in this one, I want you to be very ruthless. If they, you find there's a project they've done somewhere, take your time and go visit that project. Talk to buyers there. Find out for yourself how did they do that project? Did they delay? Yeah. So the, you are still dealing with the history of this developer. Who is this you're dealing with? I know in some serious countries, in, in serious democracies, this process is not necessary. It is not necessary at all. And I talk about it at length in the book. Yeah. But we are not yet where we want to be as a country. We are still a work in progress. So these things we have to do, and the onus is on you as a buyer to do this due diligence for yourself. So go and find out what are the projects have they done? Did they deliver on time? Can you speak to the buyers of those projects? Are they complaining? Are they happy? Yeah? It's very important. Find out the past projects. Especially if, if, you're, if you're buying an apartment, right? Or you're buying houses. Have this developer done apartments before? Have they done houses before? Yeah? And the most important thing you have to do, I don't know how much you're going to post, but find your way and go and get a buyer, a previous buyer in that development and interrogate. If this is their first project, then well and good. Then this part of getting a past project is necessary. But if it is not, you must get the past projects. Interrogate that. Yeah? Now, as I said, a critical part you must find out on those past projects is how they were executed. How were they executed? Did the delay? Delay is important because a number of developers in this country never complete projects on time. It become criminal to finish projects on time in this country. Projects are delaying. So a history of how a developer does a project is important for you. I mean, for heaven's sake, if you find that this developer has done three projects in the past and all of them have Huge delays. Why get involved? Why get involved? Because what awaits for you is just tears. Premium tears will wait for you. And I know buyers are always in a hurry. Yeah? You see a billboard of 5 million, you are quick to rush for it. And they all, oh, they tell you 5 million within 12 months, you have your house. And then you wait for three years. And yet, there were red flags that if you just check the history of the developer, you will have seen the red flags that this developer does not uh, build projects on time. You didn't check? So, please check how the pro projects were executed. Their past projects were executed. Are they consultants of those projects? Who was the contractor? I mean, those, those important things you have to check. Especially for me, is how they were financed and how they were, uh, 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 whether that they were delayed or not. Right? And lastly, as, as I said, important on the history of developer, very important, is contact with the past buyers. That first-hand information from people like yourself who have bought and interacted with this developer in their past projects, that first-hand information is important for you. And the internet is there for you to give you all this information. So go deep, deep. Find out from their past. And sometimes they will tell you. Some developers will tell you. Will tell, oh, no, we did this project. We done this project. You go to their offices, their models of past projects. You go to the websites, they are show, showcasing all their projects. Just take a drive to those projects and find out for yourself how those projects were executed. So the first thing, and that's I bring it number one. When you're beginning to buy a house, whether it is completed or off plan, the history of the developer is at the center of that decision. Don't overlook it. This industry is full of crook developers, people that have no intention of completing projects. All right? And if you're looking for validation in terms of marketing, there will be big billboards, there will be on Prime TV. 
run away from it. So history is the first thing. As I said, I talk about seven things. In this episode two, history of development. Number two, who is the project's team? The project's execution team is number second thing you must check before deciding to buy a house. And I'm going to elaborate that, all right? The project execution teams consist of consultants and mostly the contractor. And I want to highlight this, in, in fact, in the backdrop of what you are witnessing in terms of building collapse. Developers, a lot of them, a lot of them like shortcuts. All right? It is important. The, the, the law, the law, Cap 525, right, of the Architects and Code Surveyors Act, uh, Cap 530, Engineers Act of 2011, uh, the NC Act of, 20, of 2016, it is a, a requirement under the law that a project must have a registered architect, a registered quantity surveyor, a registered structural engineer, a registered contractor with NCA. Those are mandatory legal requirements under the law that any project, a house, or whatever nature, must have those consultants. I want you to check whether these consultants exist on this project before you decide to buy. Otherwise, you're going to buy houses that are collapsing. You're going to buy houses that have cracks. You're going to buy houses that are finished, finished poorly. So the second thing you must check that I want us to discuss at length is the project execution team. A development that has no cons registered consultants and contractor is a no, period. Walk away. So before you sign that letter of offer, request this developer to give you the licenses of consultants. Who is the architect on this project? Do you know him? Can you check him? Has he done past projects? Yeah. Who is the quantity surveyor? Who is the engineer? Who is the engineer? Who is the structural engineer? Is he registered? And some of these things are so easy. Uh, and, and nowadays, a, a lot of developers even put them on their uh, brochures. And I'll tell you, it's so easy to check their registration status. Just go online, for example, the architect. Uh, go to the website of Borax, Board of Registration of Architects and Quality Surveyors. Uh, if National is the architect, if you go to the website of Borax, just check under registered architect type national's name. It will show you whether I'm registered or not. It's that simple. Same to the contractor. Go to NCA website. Yeah. Check that name of the contractor there. Just type the name there. They have a search place. Find out whether this, this contractor is registered. To the engineer, go to the engineer's board of Kenya website. It's online. You can do it on your phone. Uh, if national is the instructional engineer, just check national's name there. Whether national's names appear as this engineer. If it doesn't appear, I'm not registered. It's simple. Right? So check that the architect, this consultant, this project team, this project has the requisite consultants required under the law. Verify that properly. It's important. Otherwise, you're going to deal with a project that is not properly designed. It's not safe for you to put 15 million on it. And I've seen so many projects in this town Finished one year down the line, cracks. You're always repairing your house. Remember, the beauty of this process, the beauty of having a project that has consulted is that there are liabilities. They are regulated under the law, and if anything happens, they are responsible. A number of them even have their professional indemnity on it. So you can call out an engineer, register under the law. But most, most real estate projects have quacks. So verify, please verify, verify that the project that you want to buy a house in have the required registered consultants on it before you put a penny. It doesn't matter how beautiful, how nice it is looking. It doesn't matter. Check that the registered consultants are there. The consultants required under the law are on this project. Another thing you need to check is the past projects of these consultants. Like the contractor, for example. Who is the contractor? In this area of internet, you'll find he has a website. Can you check his past projects? 
All right? Just, just check. I mean, some of these things are so easy. Do it at the comfort of your lounge, the comfort of your sitting room. Verify these things. So go through the process. It is a prudent thing. Whenever you find, I always say, if you find a developer as a project manager, trust me, it's an added advantage. It shows the seriousness of that developer. In this age of competition, project management is at the center of successful delivery of projects. But the law does not require that there has to be a project manager. It's an added advantage. But check that the engineer registered, the architect registered, the engineers, both mechanical, electrical, civil, and structural, the four of them registered. <coughs> the architect registered, the quality surveyor registered. Check and tick, the contractor registered with NCA. He is registered and qualified for that position because NCA has eight categories of contractors. And those category of con contractors are qualified to do a certain maximum value project. So NCA, eight contractor, for example, does, I think, up to 10 million. Yeah, and then you go to up to NCA one. NCA one does infinite value of projects. Now, if you find that the license you're being given for this contractor is NCA eight, and yet the project value is 300 million, you put question marks because in the law, NC8 contractor cannot do a project of 200 million. Something is wrong. So those are the question marks you need to put because there is a reason why the industry has defined these standards. It's not a mistake that an NC8 contractor cannot do a 300 million project. There's a reason why. But the shortcuts of a number of developers is what will put you into a mess. So check and recheck that all these things are ticked. Right? So, those are the first two things critical for buying a house. History of developer, very important, very imperative that you need to verify and check that the history of developer is apt and you have verified with the T that this is a person you can deal with. And number two, who are the project's team? And, and part of this that I forgot to mention is sometimes, the certain consultants, once you see them on the project, you have the comfort of that project is genuine because they do a lot of their own diligence as well. They verify a lot. So the fact that you will have, for example, if I, if I was involved in that project, if you, if you find my company, Beacon Africa, on that project, definitely you know I'm verified because we don't just do projects. We do projects that we know we are sure and we are, we are vetted. So the comfort of checking consultants sometimes will, will give you the luxury of saying, if, if so-and-so is involved, definitely they have checked. There are certain consultants, reputable ones, that do not just do projects. And I'm, I'm one of them. I check who the developer is. And by being on that project, you know, so just check the consultants. Very important. Those are the first two things I want to talk about. In the next episode, please uh, tune in as, as I talk about the next two things that you must, talk, that you must check when buying a house. Thank you.